Hmm, no Dante. Finally, I can do my own channel, my own show, even though that idiot did one last week. What could I possibly do? Hmm. Uh, Dante was here, he would have uh, an idea. Hey, don't, don't even talk about that. Dante's not here. So, uh, um, let's talk about movies. Movies, that's a great thing. Um, top 10 movies of 2014. How about we do that, guys? So, when we get come back from this little uh, banging ass intro that I'm going to have put in, we will talk about the top 10 movies of 2014. Derp -de -derp. I am Zach. This is my intro. So, hey everybody, how you guys doing? We're back. I'm back because Dante's out of here because Dante's done with this channel. I'm on by myself. So today, I'm going to be talking about the top 10 best movies of 2014. And yeah, let's get on with the countdown. But first, let's talk about some honorable mentions. Uh, I don't know why I'm doing this, but yeah, honorable mentions. It was a lot of good movies, um, but all of them could not be on this list. I'm so sorry to those films that could not be on my top ten. Uh, my list doesn't matter, but that is to me, I guess. I'm going to stay on this side, because over here, I'm going to have trailers of all the films I'm talking about. So yeah. With Zach or me, I'm going to put them in right here, a little box, while you can have something to watch while I talk about these films in detail or not detail. I don't know yet what we're going to do. Let's talk about honorable mentions. First one, 22 Drum Street. That was fantastically funny. I love the movie so goddamn much. It was great. Channing Tatum and Jonah Hill, perfect combo. It just amazing comedic timing from Channing Tatum, who was the star of this movie. And that was a great film, and I loved it. And I want more of it. I want more in my, my, my movie screens. And we have, secondly, we have Wish I Was Here, Zach Braff's Kickstarter program movie, which was heartfelt and amazing. Zach Braff is great. He had Donald Faison from Scrubs in it. And check it out. It's on Blu-ray. I need to pick it up. It's, it's an amazing piece of film. And we have Gone Girl. I was surprised, as you guys, that this movie was not on the list. Um, ben Affleck was perfect as Nick who was being accused of his wife's murder slash kidnapping. We don't know what happens to her in the movie. David Fincher is a genius. And I don't see really any flaws with this movie, just I loved these films be better. And I have um, one more, actually two more that I have to take off the list and put up. Edge of Tomorrow, which was great. Um, it starred Tom Cruise as this coward. It's a, it's as he fights a war with aliens, it's Groundhog's Day mixed with al uh, aliens, and it's great. Emily Blunt's a badass in this movie, and just check it out. And my final pick for honorable mentions is The Drop with Tom Hardy and the late, great, amazing James Gandolfini. So if you haven't checked that out already, please do, because it was fantastic. All right. Number 10. Number 10. Number 10. I might have an intro, uh, something on the side or something. I don't know. Somebody saying number 10. But it is the Lego movie. Oh my god, how much I love this movie. It's so good. It, everybody played with Legos as a kid, and it, it blows my mind how they did stop motion and CGI in the same film. Oh my god. These filmmakers, they're actually, actually the guys that, that directed 22 Jump Street, which they are on a goddamn roll, and I'm so happy to see them doing so well. And a Lego movie, I can't wait for the second one of the Batman Lego movie. It's going to be fantastic. And... Number 9. At number 9, we have How to Train Your Dragon Dose. Oh my god, guys, this movie... Oh, oh my god, animation was so good this year. I have another animated movie on this list. But yeah, How to Train Your Dragon is a continuation of How to Train Your Dragon 1. Um, I forget the character's name, but it's the animation just perfect. I, I can't describe it any other way. Voice acting is great. Uh, TJ Miller was in this. A lot of good people. Gerard Butler played the father. Oh my god. It's just heartbreaking and a heartwarming film and I don't know what I'm doing with my hands I'm just gonna leave them down here but it was fantastic and I'm so glad I saw it and we're gonna go on to number eight number eight 
And now we have number eight, which is another animated. This is like top. All these animations are great, but they weren't better than the rest of the films. But we have Big Hero Six, Baymax. You're a boss, and I love you, and I have a pin of you, and you are the best character, animated character of this year. You're fantastic. Probably in the last couple of years, you're actually the best animated character. And I loved it, and I want more of you in in the face zone with the movies screen and all that good stuff. I don't know what I'm saying at this point, guys. Just. Go see Big Hero 6. I think it's still in theaters. You'll love it. You, you bring your kids. All these animated movies, you can bring your kids to learn a thing or two. And enjoy some good animation. And that's my number eight, which, uh, number seven, which is Big Hero... Wait, is it number eight or not? I think it's eight. Eight is not Big Hero 6. I'm sorry. And number seven is... Number seven. My number seven... I don't have any claws, but maybe I can put them in. I don't know. It's X-Men Days of Futures Past. Oh, my God. Thank you, Brett. Not Brett Ratner. Uh, is it, is it, I don't even know. Brett Ratner, I, I don't even know. But whoever directed this movie was fantastic. I didn't think anything could be an X-Men first class, but this did. It knocked it out of the park. You have Jennifer Lawrence kicking ass as Mystique. Michael Fassbender as young Magneto. You have, um, what's his name? God damn it. Uh, I'm going to get shit for this. But the guy that plays young Xavier is fantastic as well. Then you have Ian McKellen and Patrick. I forget his last name. He plays old Magne uh, old Xavier, Charles Xavier, whatever. You have Wolverine, played by Hugh Jackman as always, who's great in the movie. And just an overall great cast. Erased all the stupid shit from X3, and now we have a new series with Apocalypse. I don't know if this is gonna Apocalypse is gonna beat it, but yeah, that is um, X Men First X Men Days of Futures Past is my number seven. I want to say I don't know. I, don't know. I'm, I, I didn't prepare this list as you guys can tell, but yes, and we're gonna go on to number six. Number six. And number six, six, six. I don't know what I'm doing with this countdown, guys. Please help me. I think I need somebody back. Oh, my God. Uh, at number six, we have Captain America. Dose. We have a lot of twos on this list. But Captain America 2, I actually saw this with Dante. Mm. Eh, what can you do? Um, yeah, Captain America 2. You have the continuation of which was my least late, likely favorite superhero, Captain America, turned into one of my favorites in this movie. He became a badass. Um, Black Widow became a badass. Uh, Nick Fury's badass is awesome. And the best villain in a long goddamn time. We have the Winter Soldier, played by, I can't tell you, Sebastian Shaw plays him, but I can't tell you who is actually him, but I, I think you can already figure it out. But go see this movie. It's action-packed. It's a spy espionage movie. It's just Marvel Phase 3 is coming, and we're going to be getting amazing film. Civil War is going to be amazing. And this film was awesome. So that is my number six, Captain America, the Winter Soldier, at number six. Number five. And at number five, another movie I saw with Dante. What the hell? Am I seeing all these movies with him? That idiot. I saw his video last week, guys. It wasn't that good, was it? You can tell me. You, you, you guys can tell me if it was good. But let's talk about number five, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Oh my God, this was so good. All these movies were fantastic. You have Caesar, Koba, to the death. And that's it. Nothing else needs to be said. It's amazing. It's better than Rise. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, perfection. An ape movie. We don't have to talk about Tim Burton's piece of crap. We don't got to talk about the old ones. We have this new ones, which are fantastic. And our trilogy is going to be complete when the next one comes out, whatever that title is. But yes, that's not my number five, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Go see it. Go check it out. It's out on DVD, Blu-ray, whatever you want to do. And we're going to go on to number four. Number four. And my number four is Birdman. Oh, my God. What a goddamn experience I had watching this goddamn movie. Michael Keaton, you crept up on me like a bird. Well, birds don't creep, but whatever. Like a bird. It's basically his life as him playing Batman. Everybody remembers him playing Batman, and everybody wants him to play Batman again, but he can't. He has to play this character, Birdman. Edward Norton's great in this movie. Uh, Emma Stone is great in this movie. This is perfection and acting. And he's going to get nominated, Michael Keaton, for an Academy Award for the Best Actor. But I have one guy that I believe is going to win this Oscar, which is at my number one. But we're not there yet. We're at number four, Birdman. The style of this movie is so crazy. It looks like just one continuous shot. 
And you're just like, how did you do this? I don't even know. And I didn't even know. I was watching. I was like, oh, my God, they're doing something crazy here. It's witchcraft. It's the witchcraft going on. But that's, that's my number four, Birdman. Go check it out. It's probably still in theaters. Go see it. And we're going to go on to number three. Number three. My number three pick. Drum roll, please. I was terrible. I couldn't be a drummer. But I know a guy that can. Oh, my God. I know a guy that can. Mr. Miles Teller, because he gave one of the best performances of the years in, in a long time. Also, J.K. Simmons, please. Spider-Man. My, my trailer's going to be over here. But Spider-Man people. If you are going to get somebody to play Jonah Jameson, get him to play him again because he's the perfect, but he's going to win an Oscar. I am already saying for Best Supporting Actor. J.K. Simmons, you give the performance of a lifetime in this movie. I loved it. I loved you. I loved Miles Teller. This movie is a dance between two great participants going once, one at another, and J.K. Simmons and Miles Teller. My, uh, Miles Teller is the, uh, the up-and-comer, and J.K. Simmons is the teacher trying to get a point across, and you have... One of the best movies of the years in Whiplash. Watch it. I'm going to watch it again after I get off this because it's fantastic. But we have two more movies left. And we go on to number dos. Number two. So, what do you get at number two when you cross a tree, a green lady, a raccoon, a human, and motherfucking Batista from the WWE? You get my number two film, the best Marvel, Marvel movie in a long time. Guardians of the motherfucking galaxy, man. Oh, uh, no. Guardians of the galaxy was so good. I loved it. It was great. Um, Batista was the best part about this movie. He stole the show. I don't care. Raccoon was great. Bradley Cooper gave his voice. You have the continuation of the Marvel storylines. Uh, we're getting... We got our first look at Thanos. Oh, not the first look, but the first real look at Thanos in a movie. And it's just, it's, I, I was told this is going to be Star Wars mixed with Star Trek, and that is a great comparison. I don't know why I keep moving. I'm going to move over. But yeah, that's where the trailer is going to be for Guardians of the Galaxy. Go watch it. It's out on DVD. I already bought it. It's fantastic. Watch it. Watch it again. Watch it over and over again. Because Guardians of the Galaxy is fantastic, and I cannot wait for the sequel that comes out in 2017. But, with all that being said, there's one movie over the rest that just stood above everything and above the best movies of the year this is my number one and you probably didn't know what it was it's it's a superhero movie dante loves the name of this guy i gotta stop talking about him he's he's gone he's gone zach he's he's gone happy new year by the way guys we're gonna end this video right okay and number one Okay, number one is Nightcrawler. I'm not even going to edit this video. This is just going to go in the top spot because I just want to keep talking about it because this movie is fantastic. It's not the superhero, which the guy that I'm not supposed to be talking about because we broke it off. But, man, yeah, all right. Um, Nightcrawler, great movie. Oh, my God. Jake Gyllenhaal, you are going, you are go I, blah, blah. You are going to win the Oscar this year, my friend. From Bubble Boy to pretend superhero, <laughs> I don't know why, but this movie is, I, I throughout this year I haven't been on the edge of my seat like I was with this movie. All these movies, the ten, bef the nine before this were fantastic films, but this was an experience. I didn't even know I was watching a movie, even though I'm sitting there watching it. I didn't, I thought it was a part of this. I thought I was following these people, this man deteriorate into a psychopath maybe he was before but i wasn't watching jake gyllenhaal on camera i was watching the man that did whatever he could to get this footage and it's just it, it it's crazy he, he he's not jake gyllenhaal it's a character he plays this guy perfectly his his scenes with renee russo are fantastic i mean the psychology behind this man is mind-blowing and just amazing to watch and he's not a superhero <laughs> which man, man we're not going to talk about that but um yeah that's my top 10 movies of 2014 i really saw a lot of these with dante this year <sighs> it's it's 2014 i don't i don't have a friend on this channel anymore oh this got really depressing i'm sorry guys um as always, 
That's usually his line. Um, uh, have a happy new year. And I'll see you uh, when I see you. Bye, guys.